And good afternoon, it's your friendly neighborhood Tronin, and we have the BF-109G. This is an interesting aircraft in a lot of ways because it is the uh, model of uh, 109 that had the most changes. Uh, everything from tropicalized uh, uh, versions that were meant to fight in the desert to bomber versions, uh, anti-bomber versions that had a pair of uh, 30 millimeters under the wings. It was also the aircraft that convinced Adolf Galan, the uh, at one point uh, General of Fighter Forces, uh, that th the production needed to be discontinued in favor of the Falk Wolf 190. Um, the airframe was running out of gas, and the reason was the armaments. You c well, you can speed it up, and there was one further development called the. Uh, Measurement BF 109E or K, excuse me, K, and um, it, they could get up to 400 miles an hour. The design w went all the way back into uh, the mid 1930s and was actually deployed in uh, uh, Franco's war in the uh, in the Spanish uh, conflict that happened just prior to World War II. And as such, while it was a very advanced uh, fighter for his time, and certainly uh, hats off to uh, Mr. Measure Smith for being able to uh, design an aircraft that went on that long, it was about as far as it could go at this point. The K got a little faster, a little more gun power, but it was basically underarmed. One of the primary problems in actual operation was the motor cannon. Carried about 60 rounds, and then you had two machine guns in 1943 to 1945, and it was still in production in 1945, um, to fight aircraft that were much more heavily armed, just as fast, and for the most part, uh, almost as maneuverable. Though very few uh, aircraft could hang with it in uh, in actuality in maneuverability. But it was a time where the day of getting into tight turning fur balls was over. Are getting to be over. It was the exception rather than the rule. The uh, you wanted to line up on an aircraft, make a fast pass, and, and burn out of the way. And that uh, so the aircraft was essentially coming to the end of its lifespan. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't change that. Let's go on to a couple of. Uh, things here. I've fully upgraded this aircraft because I've had so much trouble bringing it up. I meant to get this video out and could not get a good video where it was just not being blown out of the sky because it's tier 7 I was constantly being exposed to um, the Alpine maps which is fine because it's got a lot of altitude uh, capability but the gunpowder was lacking so I upgraded that. Then the speed was so low that it was getting uh, um, run over by uh, F-7Fs and P-38s and mosquitoes that were constantly making uh, high-level high-speed passes. Uh, so it's been a tough road to hoe with this aircraft and I'm hoping now with the final upgrade we'll finally get it to where it needs to be. The problem is it doesn't turn as well in low altitude as the competitors you will find when it's not fully upgraded and it's not fast enough to hang at high altitude with the high altitude type fighters that you see at this level. So let's see where we end up at. Um, my experience with it so far has been very rough. Very, very rough. Um, you get it up to high altitude and an F7F and run by and take 70% of your hit points before you get out of the way. Uh, you go to chase after it, but you're not fast enough to catch up with it. And here comes the P-38J, uh, which rips you up from one side and down the other. Um, that sort of thing. So I wish I could say I'd had more fun with the aircraft because I certainly enjoyed its predecessor. I don't know that this is a design, I've yet to be uh, convinced that this is a design that uh, pulls off well. We'll see. I've been noticing my battles of late have gotten better as I get more used to the aircraft at this level. Um, but it's been rough. It has been rough. Okay, so uh, one of the things you'll notice about this, and you'll see it very shortly as we go into battle, is it's an aircraft that has the 30 millimeter motor cannon and it's got a clip system. And when it runs out of clips, you got to lay off the guns for a minute, or not a minute, but a few seconds, let it reload. 
and as lovely as that is, um, I'm just taking a moment to get a gauge on where I need to be at. Oh, as lovely as that is, uh, it's not that it uh, wasn't. Uh, it's hard to get your guns on it at these speeds. All right, so we have a P38F, and now he's not can outrun me. So this is going to be a different, uh, very different uh, battle, I think. The 30 millimeter motor cannon, or and it's called motor cannon because the uh, aircraft was literally um, the armament was literally laid between the two banks of, of the cylinders of the engine but it only had 60 rounds and when you ran out you had two machine guns well Again, you notice very short, very decisive firepower, and now you have speed. Look how fast this thing accelerates. This is a totally different uh, kettle of fish with the uh, engine upgrade, final engine upgrade. It's a three-part, like most aircraft, you have to get the airframe upgrade, you have to get the two-engine upgrades, and you've got something that's uh, almost exactly as fast as a P-51. It's also an aircraft that's happier at altitude than not. So you want to get up to, especially on this map, you want to get up there in altitude and you're good to about 7,200 feet, if memory serves correctly. And you want to have some good boost. Now that being said, your opponents all have equal to or better than your firepower and a lot of them have equal to or better than your speed this is not an aircraft that you can think I'm so fast I can't possibly get away uh, there are tier 8 aircraft quite often on this map who are faster and have armaments that will simply make you ogle I mean, we're talking grim, grim, grim. Now the, uh, you can see the clip in operation here. And this is not a bird that you like playing with because it has got such good defensive armament and you notice I am all torn up <clears throat> and there's another A26 to play with and I'm not going to do it because I might as well I guess simply can't take the damage Okay, so we're going to try to get in here and help out where we can. And that was closer than I like. Oh, about kissed the ground there. But the speed on this with the final engine upgrade is just breathtaking. It is such a breath of fresh air. I'm very glad I decided to hold off on this video until I got the final upgrade because I thought I was going to have to give it some real negative reviews or tell everybody I was an even worse pilot than I thought I was. Now again, this is a P-51A. He's moving pretty quick. And we're keeping right up with them. And you have better maneuverability than he has. And 
and we took them right out. Okay, so we have another aircraft behind us, and we probably don't. No, it's a KI-61. This is an aircraft to be careful of about getting into turning burns with. Uh, try to lose them. Oh, Spitfire 9, another great aircraft. It's an aircraft that uh, uh, matches the Spitfire 9 almost exactly. The KI-61 and the uh, uh, Spitfire, I consider they might as well be climbing into the very same cockpit. They behave that closely together. And we have two caps to the other guys, three, and we were way behind on capture points. And I have my doubts. There's much else that can be done here. We have to wait for the uh, air defense fighters to come up. I might as well grab some altitude while I'm doing this. When it locks, we should get the uh, fighter reset. The air defense fighters will come up and we can grab the cap. In the meantime, I'm up almost max altitude. And we're waiting for the defense fighters to come in. And we have them. Now normally this P-38F would just run away from me and before the upgrades and now he can't do it. In fact I'm having to slow down to keep from overrunning him. I've reloaded my 30s and he's gone. And we've got our cap back. Okay. So we're good to go there. I think it's far too late to save the game. <clears throat> but that's okay. We're, we just got to get showing on the aircraft, show you what's going to go on regardless of what the rest of the team did. And the F4F made a very ineffectual pass at me and a second ineffectual pass at me. because he can't turn inside my turning circle. And we'll use the boost to whip around. And my ally picked him off. Good job. And I think it's far too late to save the game, but we can certainly make an attempt. Now this is usually just a waste of time, but if I can get these three uh, fighters to come with me, we might have a chance. Well, we're just down to two. Well, be it as may. We're going to lose the game anyway. Might as well try to go out doing something. Again, we're moving at 426 miles per hour. I've got an aircraft on my tail, but due to excellent speed, Okay, so this may, you may find this to be a very difficult aircraft to level up. Um, I will tell you that this is um, a wonderful aircraft for uh, Tier 7, fully upgraded. The limitations, what I don't like about the aircraft, the 30 millimeter motor cannon, ugh. Do I not like that very much? Very effective, very slow firing, very short ranged, and it doesn't, uh, so you have to hang on until that 30 millimeter shell finally hits the aircraft. And it can be frustrating. You have to get closer than you like, and it doesn't give you the feedback that the machine guns do. So that's a little difficult. Uh, bringing the thing up when you start looking back on this this thing comes in at about 670s or so um, you can take a look at the tech tree to get you the absolute numbers 
And when we look at uh, Germany and you look at the BF 109G, um, airspeed, um, well, I've got it upgraded so you're not going to see, but it's essentially coming in about where the Frank is, um, 665. I was amazed because, and I didn't do the early ver versions of this because of uh, two facts. One, I was getting my clock cleaned and in such a convincing manner, I was wondering whether I would even continue the fighter line. It was that difficult. But uh, the other thing about it was just this. Um, when I got to this thing, um, and you get to, uh, let me shut down five aircraft. Uh, Okay, enough of that garbage. Uh, when you get through this, uh, trying to regain my kind of train of thought, but bringing this thing up, it's uh, slow. And when I first brought it in, it was exactly like having a uh, Ferdinand in uh, its performance. I mean, I might as well, I thought, wow, there's not even the slightest upgrade uh, in the base aircraft. So you have to go, and um, my suggestion is that you immediately get the 13 millimeter which helps somewhat and I believe you can get that for free uh, it should be included with your last module then you're going to want to go get your airframe because you're going to want to pick up the speed and the additional uh, maneuverability and then pick up your uh, 30 millimeter cannon and start working up the engine upgrades um, that being said I didn't uh, yeah, I found it quite a slog because it was like a slow-moving uh, turn-and-burn fighter without the speed to turn it into what it really is. Uh, with the last of the engine upgrades, it becomes a different beast entirely. Now, you can chase down aircraft. Uh, you don't have to worry about P-38s, P-38Js. Uh, mosquitoes down, can't get away from you. Um, that makes it a very different aircraft. I'm still not that in love with the guns. I don't think I ever will be. Um, the survivability is good. Uh, airspeed is excellent, fully upgraded. And the maneuverability is pretty darn good. It is better than its nearest competitor, which is going to be the Spitfire. Um, you notice that you have about uh, 80, uh, 56 uh, points of maneuverability in your advantage. So that's uh, quite a different aircraft, um, and it's very competitive with it, and you should have no problem at all, and you, you can, in fact, out-turn it as well as keep up with it. So that's a good point to it. Um, on the other hand, the Mustang gives you something that doesn't show up in the bare stats. Uh, 1772 feet with this gun and the BF 109G is going to give you just a little more 1889 so you can use that to your advantage um, and that's lovely but you so you're getting a little bit of an advantage there in range but the difference is with the Spitfire or with the uh, uh, Mustang, the guns on it don't overheat nearly as much, and they give you constant feedback, and they're very flat shooting, and man, you can tell a difference. Uh, it makes a lot of difference when you're firing, flying the two planes, and then you get on target, and you immediately see where you're hitting with the Mustang, and it's not like you're lining up with a pair of machine guns, and then sooner or later, a cannon shell hits, and the aircraft goes down. On the, and to the measurement side, you're going to get crits much more often. Single cannon shells will sometimes take down enemy aircraft. They will ca cause uh, modules to blow up much more often. So those are the highs and lows of it. That's a wonderful aircraft now. Um, can't tell you how much I enjoyed that flight after suffering through all the others. And I'm very glad I didn't show it to you before because you'd wondered if I was A, an incompetent pilot, and B, whether you should get the aircraft. As it's fully upgraded, yes, it's a very good aircraft to get. Certainly competitive with everything else in its tier. Wanted to thank you very much for your time uh, spent with me today. I hope that you liked the video. I hope this was informative to you. If uh, you like the video, please do like it. Uh, I can use subscribers desperately. 
need them very much. Uh, and as always, I'm uh, eternally grateful to everybody that watches them. Thank you so much.